Giannis stated a few weeks ago that his only commitment was to winning a championship. Credit the Bucks front office for responding accordingly by swooping in at the last second to overtake Toronto in the sweepstakes for Damian Lillard. A three-team deal with the Suns has Drew Holiday, three first-round picks via the Bucks and DeAndre Ayton heading to Portland. Phoenix gets Yusuf Nurkic, Nasir Little, Keon Johnson, and Grayson Allen. In my opinion, the Suns did better than a lot of people are saying as a facilitator of this trade, given they added some depth around Durant, Booker, and Beal. For Portland, they turned Dame into the future of their center position, and by the time you're watching this video, Blazer GM Joe Cronin's maybe already flipped Drew to a contender for even more assets. Main storyline here is obviously the pick and roll tandem between Dalla and Freak taken over as one of the best offensive duos ever assembled in modern day history. Two of the NBA's six 30 plus point per gamers last season are headed to Wisconsin as the Bucks' offensive prowess has now reached a problematic level. With the acquisition of Dame, it's definitely close, but Milwaukee's potentially overtaken the Boston Celtics as the early favorites to win the Eastern Conference. With only CJ McCollum next to him in 2019, Dame was able to lead the Blazers to the conference finals. Given he'll now be a 1B scoring option behind Giannis Adetokounmpo, and also have the floor spacing and well-rounded scoring services of Brooke Lopez and Chris Middleton next to him, Lillard has no excuse not to win his first chip. Before diving into every talking point after the trade, 83.2% of you watching are not subscribed, so splash that sub box to help that percentage decrease. Also, hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Appreciate you. Back to the content. So, we'll get right back to the Bucks, but the Raptors and Heat absolutely fumbled the bag in these trade talks. The Raptors were unwilling to lose Ananobi, which got them passed up in the bidding war, and after the Blazers turned down Tyler Hero, the Heat quote-unquote never felt compelled to call and improve their offer. As a result, Giannis gets another superstar next to him, as opposed to Jimmy or Pascal getting one. Confusingly, keeping up the theme of yesterday's video breaking down the lies in the Dame trade reports, Shams tweeted and instantly deleted a post saying that Toronto was getting Dame. Come on, man! I mean, come on, man! <laughs> that was a frustrating blunder from a Raps fan's perspective, to say the least. And over the last half decade, both Toronto and Miami have made it an annual theme of having their trade offers for lucrative players on the market get rejected. While the Raps and Heat fanbase had beef when the trade talks were happening, they can relate to each other in terms of getting their hopes up by their respective front office. Getting back to the Bucks and trading away a core piece in Holiday, they obviously felt they needed to shake things up after getting tortured in a gentleman's sweep at the hands of Jimmy Butler, but forfeiting Drew means Chris Middleton will have a lot more responsibility on the defensive end. Holiday helped win this team a championship with his clamping one-on-one -on -one pressure, and this past season was second among all point guards in defensive rating. That said, Dame didn't have the opportunity of playing last season, or any for that matter, next to anything close to as elite of an on-ball stopper as Middleton. He also didn't have lengthy backside help defenders like Adetokounmpo or Lopez roaming as the second line of defense with all the help that he has. Therefore, as long as Dame's combining for around 70 on a nightly basis with Giannis, he only needs to be decent enough defensively in order to more than carry his own weight. Both Adetokounmpo and Lillard are top 10 players, but Giannis is debatably the best on earth. So for that reason, Dame being his typically overpowering scoring self, while being at the very least a non-liability on D, would be more than adequate. The space opened up for Giannis to attack, now that Milwaukee has a deep-range sniper who can pull up from 40 feet, is a problem for opposing defenses that can be easily envisioned. In terms of the defense concern, to be fair, even with Holiday and last year's playoffs, Milwaukee was still third to the bottom in defensive rating. A problem not for opponents, but for the Bucks, now becomes the depth of the roster. You lose two pieces that were key to a number one seed operation over 82 games in 22-23, and not just a well above average two-way talent in Drew, but a 40% three-point shooter in Grayson Allen. Since the Bucks traded their starting shooting guard in Grayson, either Malik Beasley or Pat Connaughton will be forced to start at the shooting guard spot and provide first unit satisfactory minutes both offensively and defensively. And it's a question mark in terms of whether or not Beasley or Connaughton are viable starters. 
Connaughton seems like a better option, but moving him up entails having to trust Portis and Beasley more than you'd like to carry the bench. There have been talks about sliding Portis up to the small forward spot to create a starting five of Dame, Chris, Bobby, Giannis, and Brooke, but then you're not as mobile for the space and pace three-point shooting modern style of play. That said though, Freak and Dalla can do a lot of that carrying as your Batman and Robin. The Bucks now have the two respective conference leaders in 30 plus point games over the last five years, giving them the firepower to turn it up offensively at will. Giannis's pure slashing and Dame's primary sniping three-level scoring archetype balance out Milwaukee's attack. Holiday's best areas on the offensive end were his mid-range shooting and like Giannis, his slashing. Conversely, Dame's going to dominate scoring-wise from well beyond the key in terms of where a majority of his shots come from. In turn, this will open up significantly more room for Milwaukee's star-based core surrounding him to operate in. You have to factor in how Dame's clutch shooting is going to help Milwaukee once the playoffs hit, which is key given they were upset as the number one seed in last spring's first round. It helps a ton that Dame has the most playoff games of all time with 10 plus three pointers and averaged over 34 points and 10 assists per game the last time Portland qualified for the postseason in 2021. It seems unfair for defenses that the team who won the title in 2021 are getting the man who was second and third respectively that year in points and assists per game in the playoffs. This is the best player Giannis has ever played next to and it's not even close. Given he and Dame have proven to have a lot of their prime left, fans in Milwaukee are going to be blessed with some amazing basketball to watch. Dame's acquisition pairs the highest point per game score as the pick and roll creator last season being Lillard with the eighth highest score as the pick and roll man last season being Lopez. This deal additionally pairs the highest score per game in transition being Giannis with the sixth highest score per game in isolations being Dame Dalla which will give the Bucks more balance in terms of their tempo. Not only does Lillard significantly vamp the Bucks' floor spacing and flow, but I think he and Giannis are going to get along really well off the court given they have similarly professional leadership styles. It's a good sign that Dame said just over a year ago in May that if there was one star he'd want to play next to, it'd be Giannis. And after hearing the trade news, Lillard would throw shade at everyone who stirred up false rumors about him making it ugly if he wasn't traded to Miami, tweeting, the casuals won't be addressed, but the Trailblazer fans in the city of Portland that I love truly will be, and they'll be addressed truthfully. Stay tuned, excited for my next chapter at Bucks. Dangerously for the rest of the association, the Bucks' firepower is a massive problem considering they have three franchise scoring leaders in Dame for Portland, Lopez for Brooklyn, and of course, Giannis for Milwaukee. I want to know your take though. How much better did the Bucks get after this deal? Let me know down below. D-Flow signing off.